Hi, welcome to another lesson in learning Fusion 360. Today, I'm gonna to make a dust board from my router table. And in Fusion 360, I'm gonna show you how to use the Revolve tool, which is another technique for making solid objects. I'm also gonna show you some tips and tricks in the Sketch tool, which should hopefully make things simpler and easier for you. So, let's get started. We'll start by creating a new sketch on one of the vertical planes. Then, using the Line tool, we're going to sketch out the rough shape we want, which will kind of look like a badly shaped L. Make sure the shape is above and to the right of the origin. The alignment is important here. The taller shape will eventually form the actual dust port, and the shorter, wider shape will be a base piece that we can screw to the cabinet. I'm purposely making the lines uneven to avoid automatic constraints because some of those constraints will interfere with the dimensions I want to set later on. So if any constraints are automatically created, you can click on the constraint icon in the sketch and press the delete key to remove them. Next, let's start applying the constraints we actually want. Click the horizontal vertical constraint and start clicking on the lines that need to be perfectly level or up and down. So that would be the bottom lines, the rightmost edge, and the two top lines. You can use constraints to align more than just lines. For instance, if you click the point at the bottom left corner of the shape and then click the origin, now those two points are forced to be horizontal relative to each other. And since the origin can't move, that locks the bottom lines into place on ground level where we want it. Before we can start defining our exact dimensions, we need to add one more point. So choose the Point tool from the Sketch menu and add a point on the Z-axis about as high as the shape. Then, using the Horizontal Vertical constraint again, lock it into place directly above the origin by clicking those two points, and then constrain it to the top left point of the shape by clicking those two points. Now we're done drawing and constraining the sketch, so press the D key to start defining the dimensions. First, let's set the height of the small right edge to 3 millimeters. This will be the thickness of the object. And let's set the top and bottom edges of the taller shape to 3 millimeters too. Next, let's set how far away the shape is from the z-axis. That distance will become the opening of the dust port. Since we want the port to be tapered, we'll need to set two different sizes. Just like with constraints, you can apply dimensions between any two objects. To set the size at the top, click the top left point of the shape and then the single point we created over on the left and set the dimension to 22 millimeters. Then do the same at the bottom except set the distance to 23 millimeters. Next, let's set the height of the shape by setting the distance between the origin and the single point we created above it. In my case, I want the port to be 22 millimeters tall. And now set the size for the last bottom edge which I set to 18 millimeters. For some final tweaks, add a fillet to the bottom left corner at about 1.5 millimeters. Then, add the same size fillet to the bottom right corner. And now, the sketch is finished and we can use it to create an actual 3D object. After pressing Stop Sketch, go to the Create Revolve tool. Select the shapes we just created, then choose the Axis option and select the blue Z-axis. The tool will use the sketch to carve out a 3D body around the selected axis. The model is almost done. All we have to add are some holes to the mounting ring for screws. So let's create a new sketch on the XY plane. Draw four circles approximately where we want the holes to go. Then use the horizontal vertical constraints to make them perfectly lined up with the X and Y axis. To apply the constraint to each circle, click the center point of the circle and then click the origin. I'm going to use number 6 machine screws to attach the dust port to the cabinet, and I measure the diameter of the screws at about 3.5 millimeters. To add a little tolerance to the design, let's set the diameter of the holes to 3.9 millimeters. So, press the D key for the dimension tool, select the first circle, and set the diameter to 3.9. Now here's a useful trick for using a single value for multiple dimensions. Hover over the dimension you just set, and you'll see the dimension name. In this case, it's D11. When you go to set the next circle's diameter, type in that name, D11, instead of an actual number. Now, that second diameter is automatically set to 3.9. And if you change the value in D11, the second circle will also automatically update. So, 
set the diameter of the other circles to D11 too. We'll use the same trick for setting the placement of the circles. Using the dimension tool, select the center of the top circle and then the origin. Set the distance to 35 millimeters. Then set the other distances, except use the dimension name of the first value we set. You'll notice you can get the dimension name, D15, by hovering over the existing dimension setting, even when you're editing another value. Once all four distance values are set, the sketch is done. Now we can select the four circle shapes we just created and choose the Extrude tool. Make sure the duct port model is showing and extrude up with the Cut tool enabled. Now that we have holes for our screws, the model is done and ready for printing. And here is the printed dust port. I printed it using generic PLA filament. And when I fit it over my vacuum hose, it fits perfectly. To fit the dust port into my router cabinet, I used a two inch hole saw bit and drilled through the plywood on the side of the cabinet. The hole was barely too small, so I spent a few minutes with a file to get a perfect fit. Then I marked where the screws will go, pre-drilled, and firmly attached the dust port with the screws and some washers. And now, my router cabinet has a convenient way to reduce sawdust. So that's it. The Revolve tool is pretty simple, but it's powerful because you have complete control over the sketch that forms the contour. And in this case, I went with the Revolve tool because it also lets me put pretty much all the dimensions into one sketch. So if I had to change something like the thickness of the walls or the inner diameter, something along those lines, I just go into that first sketch and tweak the dimensions I want to, and that'll update the entire body. Well, I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any other tips, suggestions, or ideas for topics I could cover in the future, let me know in the comments below. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.